This show is called One Take, because we're doing it in one take, just like Miles Davis did everything in one take. So how I'm gonna start this little painting project here is I'm going, is I don't draw with pencil on my canvas. I'm just gonna get, I've got some silver acrylic paint that I got at the art store. <laughs> and I'm gonna just kind of start. I'm gonna start right here. And just kinda, you know, I make the shapes and the shapes make themselves. <laughs> and the thing, the thing with still life painting is you're always looking at what you're painting. And that gives us, and yeah, just there you go. Just always look. <laughs> and when I paint, I usually kind of zoom in because my eyes, I don't have peripheral vision from my brain injury. So I just kind of, uh, I tend to zoom in on what I'm painting, but I'm gonna paint everything that I see. So, and I just kinda smush it all in there and fill up the canvas. So it's good fun. And um, art is about not necessarily what, what it looks like, but you're trying to we could say you're tricking, you're, you're just making, you're making marks in a way to make it look like something. It doesn't necessarily have to look just like it, but you know, if you wanted to, it can. Let's go for these leaves right there. It does look fun. Let's get those. Painting is usually a quiet process for me. It's a way for me to process my day, my life. It's a way for me to stay calm and, you know, not freak out. Ah! <laughs> okay, now that some, I'm, I'm gonna put some stems on the flowers. Not necessarily gonna paint the vase, cause, you know. What I'm thinking for this piece is, uh, I'm gonna, uh, so it's talking about abstract realism, okay? So I'm gonna split the canvas so I can create a two-tone color effect in the background with dark color. I'm putting my paints in my palette now that I have the drawing on the canvas. So I'm gonna put a little red, skip a hole, and then put a little yellow, and then I'm gonna skip a hole. I did do it. <laughs> a little blue, and skip a hole. <laughs> the reason I'm skipping a hole between the colors is so I can make other colors in between, yeah? All right, okay, now, we oui, we oui. huh, okay. Okay, so usually how I do it is I layer my colors. So I'm gonna start with some red, and I'm gonna get the roses, wherever they are. <laughs> oh yeah, did I tell you guys I was in a coma for three and a half months? I don't think so. It might be important, but it's not. <laughs> I was, I was injured on September 7th of 1999. Uh, my band and I were going to play a show and we were late and we had to go pick up our guitar player, so. We did that, and when we got back in the car, I didn't put my seatbelt on right away. I was a block down the road, and then uh, I, hit a, I hit a rut. He lived on a dirt road. I hit a rut in the road, and uh, lost control of my car. My car did a 180 and hit a tree. 
That put me in a coma for three and a half months. And I had a very, very severe traumatic brain injury. And then, um, but the kid who was sitting where the car hit the tree in the passenger seat, he actually had his seatbelt on and he was able to walk away from the crash. I have developed painting in a way that allows me to just, it's my everything, you know? I, I paint to calm down, I paint to relax. I paint to deal with frustrations from people that I have to deal with, <laughs> that I don't want to deal with, but oh well. <laughs> okay, so there's the first rose that looks good, okay. I try not to let life get me too down because I can always do this. I had to relearn how to walk, how to talk, how to do everything over again. And in that, I think it helped with the development of my painting and just kind of how I see stuff. So, you know, I went to college, post-traumatic brain injury, thank you very much, <laughs> at Colorado State University, and I got my Bachelor of Fine Art in painting, concentration in painting. What I'm doing now is I am just kind of filling in the areas of color where there's no color, so. And you just kind of take your brush and you put it up, you put it down, you put it in a hole. You Usually when I paint, I just use one brush because there are certain ways to manipulate each brush to make different marks. But I'll probably switch it up here in a few, but not yet. <laughs> okay, so now we have two roses. Look at that, that's cool. Okay, so you see those purple flowers in there? These right here? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna mix up a purple. You want more red than blue when you're mixing. You want more of your lighter color so, than your darker color when you mix paint. Let's throw a little bit of white in there too. That'll, that'll make the purple a little more of a lavender color. This is how color mixing goes. You start with a little bit at a time until you get the color you want. There we go. That's a good one. Okay, so now we're gonna come back in here and we're gonna find those purple flowers, wherever they are. I see one, that's cool. <laughs> so when I paint, what I see I paint what I see, more or less. I was saying how, earlier when I was saying I kind of zoom in, because I can't see that well. And there we go. There's that flower. Nice. <laughs> Where's the other one? Ooh. <laughs> that might be it. Yep. <laughs> when I paint, I just kind of go for it, you know? Things don't necessarily, they, they never end up looking like you want them to. They look better, who? <laughs> All right, so now what I think needs to happen is um, just to kind of give it a little more continuity of what we're looking at. <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, mix up a green and paint in the stems and the leaves. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're making a green. So we're gonna use a lot more yellow than blue, just, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, now there's that green. There's, we mixed one green. Now we're gonna just paint the leaves and the stems and the whatever we want. Ah. Yeah, that's an ugly green. <laughs> So I said it was an ugly green, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in and highlight it with other, with another green after I get the basics filled in. 
It's starting to look like something, yeah? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Your painting is a thing and it takes lots of time, but it's worth it when you're done. You'll see, you'll see. I mixed up a slightly different green and now I'm going back in over where it kind of was already and I'm just putting it little kind of highlights, highlights of green. Uh, you know, let's make, let's do the stems while we still have some green. <laughs> yeah. So the white increases the opacity of the color. And I'm putting the green on the left side of the stem line. To kind of give them a, give them a unity and a continuity. There's no orange in there, but I think we need a little orange. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so, so we're gonna put a little orange in there now. So we're gonna get some yellow, quite a bit of yellow. Oh no, there's blue in it, it's tainted. Oh well, now a little bit of red. Okay, and I did say it was abstract realism, so we're just making up orange. It doesn't have to be there, it's cool. <laughs> okay, so, hmm, let's do this one. All right, yeah, and then we'll do this one and this one, and possibly this one, nice. <laughs> Maybe this one too. <laughs> Last orange spot, uh-oh. <laughs> I say uh-oh, because there's no enclosure on the shape, so I have to kind of make one up, ooh. Aren't my shapes beautiful? <laughs> Painting is always very up in the air. So I kind of just, an idea will come to you and then you can expand and grow on that idea. Um, more orange, more orange. Now what I'm gonna do is I already have the red and the green because they're complementary colors, you know. Now I have orange, so what naturally, what comes next is blue. <laughs> so we're gonna start filling in blue shapes. That one, that one. Mm, why not that one? <laughs> and this funky one right here, that'll be sweet, nice. So we're gonna start filling in now that we've selected the ones that we need to fill in blue. Blue. Yeah, I like that silver that I used in the beginning. It's looking good. And now with more color, on the canvas, it's starting to come to life. And the complementary colors kind of reverberate and bounce off each other. You know, that's what they do. I, I haven't always been a fan of acrylic paint. I'm an oil painter by trade. And uh, when I started my class at the Summit Arts and Crafts headquarters there across from the rec center in Silverthorne, I really fell in love with these paints because they are, they're not like cheap acrylic paints. They're really nice and they texture well. Cause when you paint, you just kind of glob it on there, you know, and smear it out if you want. But you know, when I was in art school, my painting, one of my professors, Patrice Sullivan told me, 
or told the class, don't worry about using too much paint. When she paints, she, she like heaps that stuff on there. It's pretty great. <laughs> All right. I think the blue is done. Let's do, okay, so we have blue and orange, red and green. We have purple, but no yellow. Let's change that, huh? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna say, but Jeremy, why do we need yellow? And I'm gonna say, cause it's the complement to purple. And did you notice how I kind of, when I'm selecting what color to paint my shapes, I kind of skip, skip a section to, to make more wiggle room for the playing of the colors off each other. So now we're just gonna put some yellow in all the spaces that are left on the main part of the painting. So there's, that's the beginning of the painting. Now I'm going to work on the background. And like I said earlier, I put this little line here to split it. Because I'm gonna do a dark purple and a black. I really like black. <laughs> You gotta keep the colors separated because when you mix them all together, you get brown and you know, you don't need a brown painting. <laughs> so this purple is gonna be, is gonna end up being about 50% red and 50% blue, I think, just cause that's how it worked out. So, yep. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Oh, nice. Oh, I'm so good. I'm so good. <laughs> right now, we're just painting the background. Fun, fun. <laughs> okay, so now it's half filled in or in the background. That is. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to rinse the brush. Ooh, and then get some more black paint because black paint is the best paint. Mm -hmm. You can paint everything black. You have a black room with black stuff in it. You wouldn't know where you're going. It'd be great. <laughs> Here comes the black. We're not done with the black though. So there's one more thing we're going to do with it after I paint this shape in. Okay, I'm going to see all these white spots down here in the, in the stems. Now we're going to take those and we're going to make kind of a rainbow. Here. Orange. Next. Oh, never not work, but whatever. Orange. And then yellow. And then uh, green. And then uh, blue. And then Thanks to Mickey Mouse, we now know. Don't forget, there's purple too. <laughs> so layer one is finished. Now what we're gonna do is just kind of let it dry a little bit. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm gonna take it off the easel because there's, um, there's a little space at the bottom we didn't get. So we'll just kind of flip it over or sideways, real boy. In that little space at the bottom where the easel was covering it up, I'm just gonna paint it black. So yeah. <laughs> so when I'm done filling or painting the image, I miss certain spots. So I'll go back in and I use a single color in those spots to kind of give it an element of dimension 
And then in this case, I'm using green because the green in the background and everywhere else, it will create, it will make the red roses pop off the page more, or off the canvas rather. Cool. Now we're just kind of going to let this one dry for a bit at this point. Okay, so now I'm going to put a white shadow behind the flowers. The shadow will give it dimension, will increase the depth and dimension of the piece itself. Kind of make it look like it's popping off the page, you know? Yeah. Okay, there it is. There's our painting right here. Here's the painting and there it is. Now it's complete. And all I was doing was just painting. If you would like to investigate my stuff further, come to my art class Thursday night, every Thursday night, 5.30 p.m at Summit Arts and Crafts headquarters across the street from the rec center in Silverthorne.